Now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. Boy, when I stand at the gates of heaven, that's what I'd like to hear said about me. But I know it won't be, because I've sinned and I've done an awful lot of things that I wish I hadn't have done. But isn't that a wonderful thing to hear? Now here's a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know this about me, Nathaniel asked. Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Oftentimes, sitting under a fig tree or some other tree was a way in which they would um, sit there and meditate. We had a reading from 1 Corinthians 6, and it is a good reading, but I often wonder why we skip the very first part of that chapter. It's a short chapter, and the first part of it I'm going to go through today. It is 1 Corinthians 6, verse 1. When you, one of you has a dispute with another believer, how dare you file a lawsuit and ask a secular court to decide the matter instead of taking it to other believers? Wow. How many times do we see this in today's world? As believers, there is a certain part of us that expects trust from other believers. The second verse goes like this. Don't you realize that someday we believers will judge the world? And since you are going to judge the world, can't you decide even these little things among yourselves? That doesn't mean where one person presses and says, I'm right, and I'm right all the time, and you better listen to me, or else I'm going to leave. That's holding the church hostage. But it's where we can get together and talk about things and really look at things from a way in which Christ would look at them. And Christ was very merciful. And that's what we're called to be in our life, is merciful. Verse 3 says, don't you realize that we will judge angels? So you should surely be able to resolve ordinary disputes in this life. Little things between people. We're not perfect, but we can strive towards perfection. We can strive for, uh, towards perfection because Jesus was perfect and we do embody the body of Jesus Christ as believers. If you have legal disputes, this is verse 4, if you have legal disputes about such matters, why go to outside judges who are not respected by the church? There are a lot of people out there who are not respected by the church. We do our best to try and respect them, but not always does it come. And verse 5 says something that really surprised me when I reread it, for probably I don't know how many times I've read this because I read it wrong. It says, I am saying this to shame you. It doesn't say, I am saying this not to shame you. It says, I am saying this to shame you. Isn't there anyone in all the church who was wise enough to decide these issues? But instead, one believer sues another right in front of unbelievers. Now, why is that so important? This is verse uh, six, why is that so important? Because as a person, and then you will hear people actually say this, and he's supposed to be a Christian. Do it right in front of unbelievers. How can we be a witness to unbelievers if we are suing each other, or complaining about each other, or trying to make someone else look bad so that you look better? And then verse 7 says, even to such, or even to have such lawsuits with one another is a defeat for you. Each one of us is defeated in ourselves if we have such lawsuits against other believers. Why not just accept the injustice and leave it at that? Why not let yourselves be cheated? That sounds a little funny too. Why not let yourself be cheated? Oh, I, I can't be cheated. I won't stand for that. I'm not going to sit here and take that from them. No way. 
My mother was probably one of the greatest Christians I've ever known. And she had a lot of people come to her, and as the organist of the church, that's a tough job. She would have other people come to her, and other people complain to her about what she's doing in the choir, and uh, the pastor complaining and stuff, and then about whether she gets paid or not, all this stuff. But I got to say, this is a format I think my mother followed, because I never heard her go into a church and complain about anybody in the church. In fact, she would take whatever salary she gave that they gave her and turn it right back into the church. That's what she did. Instead, you yourselves are the ones who do wrong and cheat even your fellow believers. This isn't my words, folks. This is the Bible's words. That's from 1 Corinthians 6, 8. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says, and 6, 10, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? And don't fool yourselves. Don't be fooled. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God if you go around putting down other people who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not going to happen. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheap people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. None of them. Those aren't really happy words to me. But here comes the happy words. Here comes what we all live for. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. This is verse 11, last verse. I'll say it again. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. We were cleansed. Oh, many people say, yeah, I was cleansed in my baptism. But don't you realize that baptism is an ongoing thing? Don't you realize that many times when you get in the shower or the bathtub, you should remember your baptism? Don't you realize that when you make the sign of the cross, you are remembering your baptism? It's an ongoing thing. Again, it says, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Once we call upon the Lord Jesus Christ and become believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit enters us and takes over for us in the way in which we handle ourselves in the presence of believers and non-believers. Folks, I'm not perfect. I wish I could say it was as good as my mother, but I know I'm not. I know that she had a hard life, but the one thing that made her happy was her relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank God that she had that relationship because because of that relationship, she helped me with my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be up here today. Let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come and preach your word. We thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you for the times in which we get crossed up and yet you are with us to help us through it. All this we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.